At first it seemed like an impossible dream to transfer the nation's pastime from the nation's capital. My dad had his biggest challenge, and there were many, in getting a team here, in, which was the last challenge, which was to take a team from the nation's capital and bring it here. He had his, his big allies who he was forever grateful for in Lamar Hunt and Tommy Mercer, but they all kind of backed out because they realized you know, it's going to come by a team that we're going to have to move them here and there's no ownership in it for us. And they just, everyone kind of disappeared. And um, my grandfather then kind of went after it alone from there, got the tip that the senators were in big financial trouble. It was tough to get a team out of Washington. But Tom was, heard about Bob Short, the owner up there, how dissatisfied he was with everything. And yeah, he'd probably move. And so Tom Vandergriff went to work on that, almost alone. Their attendance was somewhere in the area of 600,000. That's just not enough to operate a baseball field. And he, so he got the, uh, the uh, uh, American League to allow him to seek uh, uh, a, a new city. And of course, I'm sure when Tom learned that, that was his impetus to go down. There was no question the team was playing in an old stadium that was crime infested. The team has been terrible for decades. Uh, had had a brief run when Ted Williams first became the manager there, but they'd fallen back in the intervening final two or three years they were there. And my father, he was in a cab when he was going back and forth up in the DC area, uh, meeting in secret with Bob Short. And a cab driver asked him about this Vandergriff guy and, um, you know, they're trying to take the baseball team. The cab driver, you know, a lot of people, of course, in D.C. were pretty incensed about all of this. And so my dad got in a cab, and, and I think the cab driver may have asked him where he was from, and he just said, Arlington, Texas. And so then the cab driver said, well, do you know this guy, Tom Vandergriff? And my dad said, well, or he said, what do you know about him? And he said, well, some like him and some don't. And um, that's what my dad said to the cab driver. And the cab driver, according to my father, said, well, put me in the cab that doesn't like him. And then my dad confessed who he was, and the cab driver pulled over, he said, get out. The senators were just a hot mess and in huge financial trouble. And, but to lift them out of their chair and move them here, because of all the opposition that he was facing in Washington, D.C. Here comes Richard Nixon, big baseball fan, big sports fan and he opposed this move. And Bowie Kuhn, the commissioner of baseball, also opposed the move. So he had the commissioner of baseball and he had also um, the president of the United States opposing it. And the president of the United States, because Bowie Kuhn was kind of his spy, giving him information, that he would lobby those owners very hard not to let baseball move out of the nation's capital. Even with the president of the United States screaming, and, you know, he was all in the papers, and of course they're playing uh, big. Uh, the media in Washington, TV, radio, newspapers, because he wanted to save the senators. And, but he wasn't the real worry. He was just talking about the real worry were some congressional people. Uh, Congress had House people, had Senate people, and you're going, they're the ones you need to worry about. In the summer of 71, uh, my grandfather, I mean, he did lots of trips to Washington, D.C., uh, lobbying, meeting with folks, meeting with Bob Short, really mapping out how this was gonna happen. Did it in secret for a long time and then finally became public. When it became public, it was big, uh, big news. Richard Nixon um, said it would be the worst thing that happened to the Capitol since the British set it afire in 1814. I mean, he, he was he was livid, and so his his son-in-law was David Eisenhower, and so he sent him out there to RFK Stadium to go say, "Short, what the heck are you doing? You cannot you, you cannot move this team." So David Eisenhower is driving all the way to RFK Stadium. My grandfather's there, and David Eisenhower comes up into his office and Mr. Short virtually shoved me into that closet. And uh, that's where I stayed until they told me it was safe to come out. Back in the saddle again. One great story is Tom became a friend of the singing cowboy, Gene Autry, who owned the California Angels, they were called that in those days. And that 
ended up kind of swaying everything. 1971, they were making the, the final pitch in Boston to all the American League owners, Bowie Kuhn, who was the commissioner, and Gene Autry, his longest ally, was hospitalized and couldn't be there. And he was critical because he, I mean, he was the guy who kind of pulled everything together. And so sensing that there was kind of a fracture there, Charlie Finley, who again, the guy who three times said he was moving to Arlington and didn't, he felt emboldened by this. And he said, well, you need Gene Autry's vote. I'm not gonna give you my vote now um, unless you give me Jeff Burroughs who was their star, um, you know, their star player at the time, their up and coming player, who said, I'm, I'm, not gonna, I'm not gonna give you my vote to move this team unless you give me Burroughs. And so he was basically holding him hostage and knowing that without, if he loses those votes, the deal's done. There, there is no, the Rangers are not coming. And so they went to the hospital where Gene Autry had taken ill. He was the owner of the California Angels at the time and got his vote from his hospital bed to came back over to the meeting and that was the final vote they needed to go forward. Here is a WWDC sports bulletin. Fred, the Washington Senators are leaving. In special session, American League owners have just authorized the Major League Baseball team shift to Arlington, Texas. All of a sudden, 1971, the announcement comes down, the Washington Senators are moving to Arlington. But I do remember the incredible energy of everyone that was connected with it. And I do remember, you know, dad's excitement and, and, and everybody's excitement that it was coming. He was everybody's citizen of the year, statesman of the year, they wanted to run him for governor. They had, I mean, it was, lots of things were coming his way. And so you would have, even as a 13, 14 year old boy, uh, it was amazing to watch him with a lot of pride. He was very humble about that. And he always talked his whole life about uh, what Arlington did, and he was just a steward of the time. For him to come in and literally take that team from Washington and move them, you know, to what Shirley Povich, who was a famed sports writer at the time, said, you know, it's a town uh, with the stature of an anthill. Um, it was, it was big. It was really big, and he lost so many times. I mean, it, it was year after year and constant rejection. He never stopped. I mean, never stopped. That took a few years, but we finally hit a home run. 